Welcome to the second seminar uh, about supergravity in 11 dimensions. So let me remind you uh, a bit the plan of the uh, series of these uh, three talks. So last time we saw the uh, definition of what uh, supergravity in 11 dimension, um, what's the relevant least super algebra uh, in this framework, the Poincaré super algebra, and um, how to construct uh, a geometric uh, least super algebra, which is called Killing super algebra, out of uh, um, so called Killing spinors in, in supergravity and uh, and Killing vectors preserving. Uh, the other geometric data of the supergravity theory, which, which is the close for form F. Um, so today we, uh, we will start um, having a look at some uh, structural properties of supergravity backgrounds. Uh, I'll give you the uh, homogeneity theorem, uh, whose proof is uh, uh, nice and relatively short, um, and is uh, one of the first structural results uh, in this direction. And then we will, uh, um, uh, we will focus uh, on least super algebras. So uh, interpret them as uh, filter deformations, see a relationship between uh, Killing Spinner and uh, Spencer cohomology. And at the end, I will, uh, um, I will tell you uh, what are the maximally supersymmetric backgrounds. Uh, and I'll uh, take a little detour. So at the end of today, I will not just speak about uh, uh, how things develop in uh, dimension 11, but also in uh, uh, dimension four and six. So let me uh, remind you the uh, general setup. So we have a, a Lorentzian manifold, MG, dimension 11 with a close for form F, and uh, uh, the manifold is supposed to be spin. Um, didn't enter too much into details, but uh, last time, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit more uh, next uh, lecture, but uh, it's sufficient to, uh, to think that we have a vector bundle, the spinor bundle over, over M, whose fiber, typical fiber is the uh, 32 uh, real dimensional um, spinor module S. So the question of supergravity uh, with the uh, gravitino set to zero are the following couple system of PDs, uh, an Einstein type equation and uh, a Maxwell type equation. And we defined last time a symmetry as uh, something who has uh, uh, an even part and an odd part. So we have uh, Xi, uh, uh, which is even, it's a killing vector field for G preserving the full form and epsilon, which has to be thought as odd. Uh, which is the Killing Spinor. So um, a section uh, of the Spinor bundle, which is parallel for this uh, connection here. So here Nabla is the Levi Civita, and this other extra term is purely algebraic, and uh, and uh, and uh, and it's something in the endomorphism uh, of the Spinor module, uh, point by point. Okay, so we uh, stated the uh, result proved in 2005 that if we consider the Z together vector space given by the symmetries, uh, this has a natural structure of a least super algebra. And we also see the proof of this. So remember the flat example of, uh, uh, of this theory is given by Minkowski space time with the four form uh, set to zero. In this case, our spinor connection is just the Levi Civita. So uh, K1 are just uh, parallel spinors on flat Minkowski, and uh, K0 is the Poincare algebra. And when you consider the Killing superalgebra structure on, on uh, uh, of this flat background, you just get the Poincare superalgebra P. So historically, uh, the Killing superalgebra was one of the first uh, useful invariant uh, for supergravity backgrounds. It was used at the first general check back in the days of the ADS CFT correspondence. Um, it behaves uh, uh, well with respect to certain kind of geometric limits. So if Penrose limits are uh, limits where you focus uh, on, a, on an algeodesics and the Killing superalgebra uh, becomes a contraction. Uh, what's important for us and for this series of lecture uh, is the following equation one. 
So if the dimension of the space of killing spinor is uh, strictly bigger than uh, half the dimension of uh, half of the maximal possible dimension, so half of 32, then a lot of uh, uh, nice things happen. And uh, at the beginning, it was uh, um, observed uh, by Messen that all uh, non-supergravity backgrounds with uh, such an amount of killing spinors were locally homogeneous. So, so it was conjectured by Messen that condition one uh, implies local uh, homogeneity. Uh, and we are going to see this, uh, which was actually proven uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, by figure of Ariel and Astler. So the theorem tells us that if the dimension of K1 is strictly bigger than 16, then the background is locally homogeneous. Uh, so before going to the proof, uh, I would actually uh, like to take a small detour, which is uh, um, connected also to uh, Arman questions at the end of uh, the first talk. So let me uh, let me stop uh, sharing this and uh, and I'll share the tablet. Uh, so. Uh, is that okay? Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, remember we, Armand, we discussed a little bit about the orbit structure of the spinor module and there was some uh, uh, confusion uh, essentially dictated by the fact that uh, there are a lot of definition of uh, spin modules. The one that I'm using are the so-called Majorana. So they are representation for the real Clifford algebra. Uh, but Armana had in mind uh, the complexified version. And uh, so uh, the orbit structure are uh, um, somewhat different. So, uh, so let me take this uh, detour to make things clear. So we are uh, working with Majorana spinors. We have an action of the spin group in Lorentz and signature. And remember whenever we have a, a spinor, we can construct uh, quadratically out of uh, our spinor a, a P form on V. And um, um, by representation to that in facts, um, uh, P uh, essentially can be, can be taken, is, is interesting only for one, two, and five because all other values of B, either you get the Hodge dual of this form or uh, actually the P form is uh, uh, vanishing. Okay, so these are the um, interesting values. And, uh, and remember this was defined um, via Clifford multiplication. So we have a symplectic form on the spinor module and we pair S with with the p vector Clifford multiplying s. That was the definition. Okay, so let me state a number of facts, which uh, I'm not going to prove, but uh, to make clear the orbit structure in this case. So first of all, s is uh, vanishing if and only if uh, omega one, omega two, and omega five are zero. Well, it's, well that's uh, that's a triviality. Uh, there's nothing deep in this uh, uh, in this claim. I'm just saying that uh, I'm projecting uh, um, an element in the second symmetric power of S into uh, its irreducible components. Um, but in Lorentz and signature, uh, you can prove that this is equivalent to the fact that only one of them vanishes. So this is it's not true in the complexified picture, and that's uh, what Armand was saying about uh, pure spin or defined by uh, the vanishing of omega one and omega two. Uh, but this cannot happen in uh, 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 for us. Okay. So second fact. Um, the Dirac current or uh, which is the same, uh, it's dual, which is omega one is causal. So you can show that it's other time-like or light-like. 
and, and what was proven by Garo, Farrell, and Bryant essentially at the same time uh, is that the orbits on S are the level sets of squared norm of omega one. So um, if, uh, if it is time-like, uh, you have a 31 dimensional orbit. Uh, if it is like, like is 25. So at the end of the day, uh, when you pass to the projectivization, uh, all these 31 dimensional orbits will glue together and uh, projectivize to a single 31 dimensional uh, generic orbit. Whereas the uh, 25 projects to a 24 dimensional closed orbit. So these are the, uh, the orbit structure I, I mentioned at some point in the last lecture. Um, if you go to the complexified picture is uh, 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 orbits with uh, no real points appear. And, and that was the uh, misunderstanding between uh, uh, me and Arban. Um, okay. So uh, how can I? Okay, I'll stop sharing here. Okay. Okay, so let's see the proof of the uh, homogeneity theorem. So by definition, uh, our background is locally homogeneous, if and only if, uh, if you focus on K0 uh, and you evaluate at a point X, uh, with values in T in the tangent space, this map has to be surjective uh, uh, at all points. But what we are going to, uh, to see is that it is already uh, so. Uh, if you restrict uh, to elements of K0, which you obtain by squaring uh, elements of K1. So remember the bracket between odd elements is given by uh, this map kappa, which I call the current is the uh, essentially the omega one uh, I show uh, a few seconds ago. Um, so this becomes a, a, an algebraic statement. So what we are saying is that uh, if we have S prime inside our S uh, subspace of dimension bigger than 16, and uh, I evaluate uh, the Dirac current on S prime instead of all of S, then this is still uh, surjective and it gives me all of V. So the proof is uh, relatively short and it's by contradiction. Uh, assume this is not the case. Then we have non-zero vectors which are orthogonal to uh, the image of the Dirac current on S prime. So it means uh, we have this equation here. And by definition of the recurrent, this is uh, um, S1 paired with V dot S2, where here S1 and S2 are both peak and uh, uh, are both uh, taken from S, S prime. So this says the Clifford multiplication, this equation here says the Clifford multiplication by V sends S prime uh, to the orthogonal of S prime. But remember S prime has dimension bigger than 16, the orthogonal then has dimension strictly less than 16. So this means that Clifford multiplication um, has to have a non-trivial kernel in S prime and uh, in particular in S. So, okay, uh, whenever um, we have an element in V uh, uh, whose associated Clifford multiplication has a non-trivial kernel, then the element has to be uh, light-like. Um, imagine um, um, S is here your spinor, which is annihilated by V. So this left hand side is zero and you hit it again uh, by V. By definition of product in the Clifford algebra, this is minus the square norm of V uh, multiplying S. 
So this tells you that V is light-like. Okay, uh, so we have seen that the orthogonal of uh, the image of K on S prime consists of light-light vectors, and it is non-trivial uh, by our uh, contradiction assumption. So this means that the dimension of the space has to be one, and, uh, and I'll write it as the real line spine by some uh, vector V. So if I take, uh, uh, again, the orthogonal of this, I learned that uh, K S prime S prime is RV, uh, orthogonal uh, direct sum with some space-like line dimensional vector space uh, W. Um, but since the Dirac current uh, is always causal, either light-like or time-like, if I pick up uh, S prime in S prime, uh, this implies that K S prime S prime uh, is forced to land in this line spine by V. It cannot have any component on W because otherwise um, this Dirac current will be space-like. So by polarization of this relation here, you learn the KS prime S prime uh, sits in, into RV. Okay, but we, we got a contradiction uh, because on one hand, KS prime S prime is all of RV that it's some W, but on the other hand, uh, is forced to, uh, to land in, uh, uh, in RV. So this shows that our assumption was uh, not correct, and, uh, and the map is subjective. Okay, uh, so this is a, uh, a nice result and essentially brings uh, the study of uh, uh, highly supersymmetric backgrounds, so those with, mo with more than uh, 16 kilospinors, into the Lie algebraic uh, realm. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, uh, homogeneous solution of uh, supergravity do not admit uh, killing spinners at all. Uh, so one needs uh, uh, some approach that incorporates uh, killing, the killing spinners from the very beginning. Um, so let me let me say what's the uh, state of the art about supergravity background. Um, in the low supersymmetric case, so uh, backgrounds admitting uh, one killing spinors, uh, a lot is known. Uh, there are local expression for both for the metric and the for form um, coming from um, essentially two uh, methods uh, developed by theoretical physicists. One approach is uh, via uh, G structure and the other one is um, so called spinorial geometry method. It, it uh, uh, relies on the fact that uh, spinors after complexification can be taught as differential forms and, uh, and one uh, revise the killing spinor equation as equation on differential forms. So if you are interested to know uh, what's going on in the low supersymmetric case, uh, these two are the references. In the last decade, one of the most uh, uh, pursued approach is uh, a uh, exceptional variation of each in generalized geometry. So here I am citing this article from 2014, but the uh, literature is uh, really extensive. Uh, there, there is a lot of work in this direction. Uh, it's important to, uh, to notice that uh, this approach works under some uh, uh, special assumption on M. Essentially you write M as a word product on some smaller dimensional manifolds. And uh, in the purely gravitational thing, so when uh, uh, the four form is set to zero, uh, it, it was observed by Bryant in uh, uh, 2000, uh, that there are Lorentzian manifold that admit parallel spinors, but that are not Ricci flat. Uh, I'll be back on this uh, next time with uh, more details. The classification of the highly supersymmetric backgrounds, on the other hand, so those admitting more than 16 killing spinors is largely open. Uh, the maximally supersymmetric one, those admitting 32, were classified by Figueroa, Farrell, and Papadopoulos in 2003. And uh, uh, I'll explain you today how uh, this classification can be uh, recovered in purely algebraic terms. 
and there are some uh, gap results. Um, so um, if, um, there are no solution with locally exactly 31 or 30 kilo spinners. Uh, the proof of these uh, two results are uh, rather involved. And uh, I'm thinking if uh, uh, um, explain my proof of the gap for 31 uh, next time uh, in, in terms of in liter ethic terms, but uh, 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 let's see, I haven't decided yet. So uh, nothing is known for 29, 28 and 27, uh, not known if uh, backgrounds which exactly this amount of kilispinor exist or not at all. There is one known background with 26 uh, and nothing is known for 25. And when you arrive at 24, uh, actually uh, solution becomes more abundant um, and it's not so difficult to, to construct them. Okay, so the, uh, as I mentioned, the idea is to uh, incorporate uh, killing spinners from the very beginning, so. Uh, yeah, yes? Uh, is there any question or? I think, I think there was uh, just some, some noise. No, it's fine. Okay, continue. yeah. Okay, so uh, the first result I want to tell you is that any killing superalgebra of a supergravity background is a filtered deformation of a subalgebra of the Poincare superalgebra. So we have uh, met uh, uh, extensively in our Greek lectures, uh, filtered deformations. So I won't spend much time uh, on the general definition and I want to tell you what does it mean practically in our case. So remember um, the non-zero Lie brackets of, uh, of this Poincaré superalgebra. So you have uh, S of V acting on, uh, uh, on V via the standard rep and on S via the spin rep. And then uh, you can square spin or two vectors uh, using the Dirac current. So from the brackets, uh, it's clear that the, you have a compatible Z grading that goes from minus two, minus one and zero. In minus two, it sits V, minus one S, and in degree zero, you have S of V. And compatibility here, I mean, uh, well, the, first of all, the usual uh, relation as uh, we already so many times, so PI, PJ uh, has to land in PI plus J, but there is also a compatibility between uh, um, the Z grading and the parity that we have for Lisper algebras. So in this case, uh, P even is the direct sum of P minus two and P zero, and P odd is uh, P minus one. Uh, so we are instanced in uh, greatest subalgebras A uh, of B. So with components A minus two B prime, uh, which is a subspace of B, A minus one is prime and uh, uh, inside S and A zero is a sub B subalgebra H of S of B. So on A, we also have a natural decreasing uh, filtration. Uh, A minus two is everything. A minus one, you have S prime and H. And A0, you only have H and uh, well, there's nothing in degree higher than, uh, strictly higher than zero. So uh, on A1, uh, it vanishes. Uh, so for me, a filter deformation of uh, A is a Lisper algebra structure uh, defined on the same vector space, uh, which satisfy the following properties. Uh, it's compatible with the filtration so if you do uh, in graded terms AI, IJ, it just not only lands in AI plus J, but also in uh, uh, I plus J plus one, I plus J plus two and so on. Uh, but you want the, uh, the uh, projection to AI plus J. So the component of the bracket of zero, zero degree coincides uh, with the bracket of the Poincaré superalgebra in our case. So the, uh, the original bracket you start with. Of course, remember that uh, in our case, there's also a parity lying around, which uh, constrained uh, the situation. And, uh, and that's, what, uh, um, that's what happens if you, if you consider uh, parity as well. So you don't modify break it between elements of uh, uh, S of V. If you do A and V, 
well, A as degree zero, V as degree minus two. So overall is minus two. So in principle, you could uh, add to uh, AV, which is your original uh, uh, contribution, also components in minus one and uh, zero, uh, but the minus one is odd. So you don't see that. So we have a map tau uh, from H, B prime, uh, that takes values in H. The bracket of S of E, uh, sorry, of H and S prime is unchanged for uh, parity reasons. Um, when you take brackets of two spinors, you have still Dirac current, but you can have some contribution uh, gamma in H. So gamma is a map, symmetric map from S prime to H. Uh, VS, prime, VS is not necessarily zero, but it's a map which I call beta, which goes from V prime S prime to S prime. And VW is, um, is changed by contribution in degree minus two, uh, which is alpha and zero, which is delta. So the interesting part here, of, of course, relies on the Jacobi identities and uh, um, that makes the um, structure pretty rigid, uh, but at the same time, interesting. Uh, I will not show the Jacobi identities today, uh, but I'll say something uh, uh, next time. So let me give you uh, an idea of the proof. Uh, since we don't have any uh, Cartan connection uh, uh, available uh, so far in this case, essentially we, uh, we have to follow uh, our ancestors, <laughs> which in this case have the name of constant. Uh, and is uh, one of his classical work from 55. So that's the classical analogy and let me uh, start with that. So let's say you have a pseudo Riemannian manifold with Li algebra K0 of killing vectors and you consider uh, epsilon even a bundle which is TM and SOTM. And on this bundle you define a connection. So Xi A is a section of epsilon zero, Xi is a vector field, and A is a skew-symmetric endomorphism of the tangent bundle, and you define a connection in this way. So uh, you take the levi civita both of uh, Xi and A, uh, but you add, uh, uh, in the first slot, you add uh, uh, the vector field given by uh, applying X to A, and on the second one, uh, you subtract, oh, well, depending on, uh, on your convention for curvature. You subtract or you add um, uh, the curvature saturated with X and C. Okay, um, so the point is that a, a, a section of uh, epsilon uh, zero is uh, parallel precisely if C is a killing vector. So if this vanishes, the uh, first slot tells you that the endomorphism A is nothing but uh, what we called A with the lower index uh, Xi last time. And the vanishing of the second slot uh, is actually something that you can prove. And, uh, and it's called killing identity. And it's satisfied by killing vector fields automatically. So this allows you to, um, to think of uh, uh, killing vectors uh, as a parallel section of uh, this bundle and, uh, and in turn to localize at any point. So introduce the notation you call uh, tangent space with the metric, you call it uh, Vita, uh, SO of uh, uh, the tangent space is SOB in such a way that the fiber uh, of our bundle at a fixed point X is uh, uh, it's the uh, Poincaré algebra uh, as a vector space. And therefore, uh, K0 is identified with a subspace of uh, the Poincaré algebra, which uh, uh, at this stage is not even yet uh, Z graded. So, so to write down the explicit the brackets, uh, you first think of uh, um, uh, your killing vector fields as uh, parallel sections. So uh, C, X, C, and, uh, and similarly for the other one and you compute the bracket and, uh, and you will discover that, uh, well, not surprisingly, uh, you have a, a contribution coming from the curvature. So you have a, what you would expect, the bracket of the uh, endomorphism A here, the action of the endomorphism AC on the other term and vice versa, but you also have the curvature. 
So to, uh, so to arrive at the filter deformation, uh, you consider evaluation uh, from K0 to it has a parallel section composed with projection to V and you call V prime uh, the image. Whereas on the other hand, you call H uh, the stabilizer, uh, it's the kernel. So this consists of elements of uh, K0, which are uh, of this form here. They have uh, zero projection to V. Okay, uh, so we have a, a short exact sequence of vector space, uh, H embedding in K0, uh, image of the evaluation landing in uh, V1, and one has to add, uh, one has to choose a, um, a splitting as vector space, which of course is non-canonical, but as long as you choose this, you identify K0 uh, with the direct sum of V prime and H, which I called uh, A0. So geometrically, uh, the splitting is just uh, saying that for every V in V prime, I choose a killing vector field uh, with that value in uh, uh, at that point X. So if you want to write this, uh, it's uh, uh, you send V, uh, which is in V prime, to uh, uh, to V and X V, which is in K zero, where X is some linear map uh, from V prime to S of V. Okay, at this point you uh, you take this bracket here that you computed for parallel sections. Uh, you have localized at a point. Uh, you have chosen a splitting and you translate the brackets and you arrive at these uh, guys here. Yeah. So here we, uh, the components in, in red are those that gives, uh, gives us the, the formation. And uh, uh, well, uh, row is, uh, it encodes uh, the curvature and also depends on this map X. Alpha also depend on X and, and Delta as well. Um, so in the homogeneous case, if, uh, um, if delta is zero, then you have a reductive space. Uh, if alpha is zero, uh, then you actually, uh, by standard prolongation, first prolongation in, uh, in uh, uh, Riemannian setting is trivial. So if alpha is zero, actually X is zero. So delta is zero as well. And these are symmetric spaces, okay? Okay, so this shows that uh, K0 is a filter deformation of uh, A0. So to get the result in the um, supergravity setting, we just add essentially spinor fields to this construction. So we consider a bundle with even and odd part, uh, even as uh, before and odd part given by the spinor bundle. And we extend the connection D uh, Define on uh, on the even part by uh, what we call the super connection, the one that defines uh, Killing spinors. So the Killing super algebra is now given by K zero, which I think of section of epsilon G zero, which are parallel with respect to D, uh, such that uh, this equation holds. Remember, uh, well, we also have to preserve F. And K one are just parallel sections of epsilon one. So again, I can localize, uh, I can introduce uh, uh, notation as before, calling S uh, the fiber of uh, my spinor bundle at a point. And this allows me to identify uh, the Killing superalgebra with the subspace of the Poincaré superalgebra, which again is not yet even Z graded. So I need to uh, consider evaluation as in the previous slide, evaluation uh, for spinor fields and choose a splitting. And once I've done that, uh, I can identify K with, uh, um, uh, with V prime S prime, which is the image of, uh, uh, of the evaluation here uh, and H. And I translate the Libra brackets of K to A. So I will just tell you what uh, uh, daily brackets on K look like. I will not write down the translation on, on a filter deformation of uh, migrated uh, uh, subalgebra of the Poincaré superalgebra. Uh, maybe I'll do it next time. Um, so the brackets between uh, the even part are exactly as before. If I take, um, 
uh, killing vector fields taught as a parallel section of uh, uh, even part of my bundle. Acting on epsilon, remember this is the uh, Cosman derivative, which was defined as uh, Levi Civita plus the uh, spinorial action of the endomorphism X. And Levi Civita, I, I can substitute uh, uh, with this red term here because uh, epsilon is a uh, killing spinor. Uh, whereas when I uh, square uh, spinors, uh, this is the Dirac current, but taught as a parallel section of epsilon zero, I have the Dirac current and minus uh, the skew symmetric endomorphism associated to the Dirac current. So minus nabla K of epsilon epsilon. Uh, you do some simple computation and, and this term here uh, becomes uh, this endomorphism, which I call uh, gamma F. So this is something that takes um, uh, two spinors and gives me uh, uh, an element in SOTM and is defined in the following way. Uh, so on X, uh, well, you, you have uh, uh, this uh, bit here, which acts algebraically on, on epsilon. And then you take the direct current of the spinor and uh, together with epsilon. Okay, so the red terms of uh, uh, equation three, four, and five are, uh, as in the classical case, are terms that contribute to components of the Libre of positive filtration degree, independently of the choice of uh, the splitting. Uh, but as in the classical case, after you have chosen the splitting, there will be uh, also other contributions. Um, so the classical case where uh, this map delta and alpha, which told us if uh, our space was uh, reductive or symmetric, for example. And we have similar thing in, uh, in the super case. Uh, but I, want, I don't want to write this, this bracket explicitly uh, this time. Um, so I'll tell you how to use uh, this result uh, essentially in, um, in the next lecture. So how the fact that the Killing Superalgebra is a filter deformation, how we can extract uh, uh, information from, uh, from this result. <clears throat> so let me uh, move on. Um, so the idea is that instead of studying uh, solution of supergravity, so supergravity backgrounds, we uh, set to study uh, filter deformation. And there are a number of questions that naturally uh, arises. First of all, is every filter deformation as we defined uh, realizable really as a killing superalgebra or some background? Um, there might be a counterexample with exactly 16 killy spinors, which uh, so far uh, has resisted all our uh, attempts to, uh, to set in one way or another. And the second point, which uh, um, I haven't uh, stressed last time, but um, in the proof um, that the killing superalgebra of a supergravity background is, is really a least super algebra. In the proof, we did use at some point that F is closed. Um, it was when we were uh, establishing the fact that if you square uh, killing spinors, you end up in killing vectors, uh, preserving also F. So we did use F was closed, but we didn't use in any place uh, the bosonic equation of supergravity. We didn't use at all the Einstein and Maxwell equations. So the result of last time can actually uh, be rephrased as saying that any 11 dimensional rates are manifold with a closed four form as an associated killing superalgebra. So the other question is, should filter deformation be further constrained by the supergravity equation? If that's the case, in a sense, uh, uh, the road that we are taking uh, lose a bit of uh, power because one has to uh, enforce Einstein and Maxwell equation uh, as well. Uh, but we will see next time that uh, this is not the case. <clears throat> so um, I'm okay with the time. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, um, so we don't have uh, Cartan connections at our disposal, but still um, we can work at the least per algebra level. And, uh, and we, can, uh, uh, we can consider filter deformations and, uh, and consider the associated cohomology theory that governs 
uh, this deformation at the first order. Uh, and and this, is, this, this essentially maps uh, the Spencer cohomology that has been discussed uh, extensively uh, for parabolic structure in the classical case. Um, and uh, there is a well-developed theory, uh, purely formal at the least algebra level developed uh, by Katz essentially, which uh, even if you don't have a Cartan uh, connection allows you to, uh, to say something. Uh, so, okay, let me uh, just briefly remind you the definition of this cohomology. Um, so you consider uh, essentially the Chevalier-Allenberg cohomology of a Lisper algebra and it's a joint representation, but you uh, um, specify to the z graded case. So concretely, let's consider the uh, cohomology of the Poincaré superalgebra. Okay, so uh, we have P minus two, P minus one and P zero, which are VS and SOB. And uh, P minus is the negatively graded part of P. So it's nilpotent of that too. Uh, the cochains of the Spencer complex are uh, the linear maps from uh, lambda bullet P minus into P, uh, where lambda bullet uh, has to be uh, understood in the super sense. So by the uh, rule of signs, uh, if both elements are uh, odd, uh, instead of uh, uh, anti-commuting, they commute. You extend the degree of P to the space of uh, Kuko chains uh, in the standard way. So you say that the dual of PJ has degree minus one, and then you extend uh, uh, naturally uh, to the tensor products. And so the space of Kuko chain decomposes in, uh, uh, in uh, PQ spaces. So Kuko chains of degree P. So for us, uh, it's interesting uh, the case of Q equal to, uh, because uh, that's where infinitesimal deformation of Lie brackets live. Um, but remember that uh, the operation of uh, uh, bracket in a Lisper algebra is an even operation. And for us, uh, parity is compatible with Z degree. So at this stage, we are not in really interested in uh, degrees P, uh, which are odd. We are only interested in uh, even degrees. <clears throat> so here is the table um, of the uh, space of Kuko chains of a uh, small degree. Uh, here is uh, this column here is uh, Q equal to, and the Spencer differential moves uh, uh, horizontally, increasing Q. So this uh, space here in red is um, uh, the uh, Q Kuko chains of degree two, and these are the Q Kuko chains of degree four. So here in uh, uh, degree two, you can recognize something that geometrically is, is essentially the torsion of your uh, uh, underlying uh, Lorentzian manifold. Uh, in degree four, you have the curvature and these other two bits are uh, involved the spinors. And we want to compute uh, H22 uh, and H42. Uh, as in Riemannian geometry, you can use a um, uh, co-cycle coming from uh, uh, one co-chains of degree two to, uh, to kill the torsion. So you normalize uh, co-chains in, uh, in, uh, in this bit here in, uh, uh, in such a way that uh, this component is not there. And then you just, you have to check uh, which map beta from V tensor S to S and gamma from symmetric to S into S of V are closed. So when I apply uh, Spencer differential and I end in this space, uh, I, I get zero. So these are some spinorial identities that uh, you can solve. Um, I'll save you the, uh, the details um, and, I, and I'll arrive to the result. So the result, tells us that uh, the H42 uh, vanishes and the H22 is isomorphic to the four forms. Um, so this result has um, uh, two important points. Uh, so the first one is uh, H42 is, uh, well, it's where the uh, curvature of the underlying Lorentzian manifold lives. And the fact that the H42 vanishes, uh, 
doesn't tell us that the underlying uh, Riemannian curvature is zero, but it is telling us that uh, this is not the fundamental curvature object uh, in the game. And indeed, we will see next time um, in, that in the highly supersymmetric case, at least it's possible to express uh, the Riemann curvature in terms of uh, uh, more fundamental object, which in this case is the four form. Um, the other interesting point is that uh, we recovered the four form uh, simply from cohomology. So this computation know nothing of uh, supergravity. We just started with some uh, Lisper algebra, the Poincaré super algebra, uh, run the machine and uh, discover that, uh, um, that Spencer cohomology uh, knows about uh, the extra geometric data, namely the four form uh, that is needed to define supergravity. Um, and, and this knowledge is even more precise. So if you, if you look at the beta component, so uh, this uh, uh, component here of the normalized co-cycle, uh, you will arrive at this expression. So it knows exactly uh, what the relevant uh, killing spin or equations are. Um, so this is, this is a crucial ingredient to construct supergravity theories. And for example, one may wonder uh, a priori why exactly this minus three appears, right? So originally in, uh, um, in, uh, in the construction of the Lagrangian by Kremel, Julian, Scherk, uh, that's exactly the, uh, the coefficient that works that uh, gives a supersymmetric Lagrangian. This is a, a perfectly fine uh, uh, theoretical physics uh, uh, explanation, uh, but a, a more geometric uh, explanation is that this is exactly the coefficient uh, that gives me uh, something uh, in cohomology, okay? Otherwise it's not closed. Um, so, okay, so to convince you that um, killing spin or equation has really a lot uh, of information of the general theory, um, uh, let me mention also this result. So take uh, the super connection D is a connection on the sp uh, spin or bundle, and we can take the Clifford trace. So it means it means take the curvature of the uh, of D. So this is something from lambda to TM in the endomorphism of the spinor bundle. Uh, fix some uh, uh, orthonormal basis, local orthonormal frame, uh, EI, and uh, saturate one entry. That gives me something from uh, TM to the endomorphism of SM, and Clifford multiplied by uh, EI again. Okay, so this is, uh, this is called Clifford trace and, uh, uh, and it's, a, uh, it's a result that uh, the Clifford trace uh, of the super connection vanishes if and only if the F is equal to zero and the Einstein and Maxwell equation are satisfied. So in a, in a very real sense, we started with just the Poincaré superalgebra, and uh, one can reconstruct a lot of the uh, fundamental ingredients of uh, the equal 11 supergravity. So this uh, um, prompted us to, uh, to ask ourselves uh, what's going on in other dimension. And we decided to use the same approach um, still in Lorentz and Signature, but in other dimensions and uh, look for uh, uh, killing spin or equation uh, that come from Spencer Komolo. So these equations are um, well suited to construct killing superalgebras because um, essentially the co-cycle conditions um, take care of uh, everything you have to check, uh, which is algebraic in order to get a killing superalgebra. And uh, and at the same time, we, uh, we were hoping to get uh, some, something new. So uh, first of all, we uh, set uh, to see what uh, was going on in dimension 11. So better, better get results uh, that are consistent with uh, what is already known. So we classify the maximally supersymmetric filter deformation in uh, 11. Uh, so these are filter deformation G of subalgebras A of P. 
uh, such that the uh, minus two uh, graded component is all of V, A minus one is S, and NA zero is a subalgebra of S of V. So the fact that A minus one is S uh, means that we have a maximal supersymmetry, uh, whereas uh, A minus two uh, equal V, uh, which is actually forced by the uh, local homogeneity theorem means we are uh, describing locally homogeneous geometries. So in order to uh, classify these objects, one has to, uh, one has to really uh, know what is the sp uh, span second Spencer cohomology group of A instead of P. So you play a bit, you boost, bootstrap the computation of uh, the Spencer cohomology group for H from the knowledge of that of P. Uh, you show that filter deformation are uh, in this case, uh, completely determined by the first order uh, infinitesimal direction, and you arrive at the following theorem, which is the classification of the uh, maximally supersymmetric backgrounds, uh, but from purely uh, Lie algebraic -like terms. So we classify yeah. the maximally supersymmetric. Yeah. Um, can I ask? So, so here you actually uh, take small h, right? H is subalgebra of S O V. Yeah, but you don't specify, uh, I mean, what are the choices? Uh, a priori, uh, you, don't have, you don't have constraints, but from the Jacobi identities of, uh, the Jacobi identities I didn't want to write down of, uh, of such a structure, which are pretty, pretty rigid, uh, allows you to prove, for instance, um, that, uh, that the stabilizer H is fully recoverable from, uh, from S prime and, and the four form. So if you know S prime, and uh, which in our case is uh, the whole of S, know the four form, then there is a canonical way uh, to recover uh, H. And another Jacobi identity is uh, so strong in this case that tells us that it's, uh, it boils down to a Plucker type identities and it tells us that the four form uh, at any fixed point uh, has to be um, uh, decomposable. Do, do you assume any kind of uh, surjectivity for the maps tau and gamma? No. No, 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 we don't, uh, no, we don't assume anything, no, 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 it's, pure, it's purely, uh, the assumption are uh, really um, minus two is uh, all of V and minus one is all of S, uh, and that's all, and, uh, and then you start to, uh, uh, you start to investigate the Jacobi identities of uh, uh, such a structure here. Right, but if all uh, this uh, deformance are trivial, right, then of course there's no restriction on H. H can be arbitrary. So you really yeah, have okay. some deformation, but then maybe it's zero on, on some chunk. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you spot my... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you spot my uh, sloppiness in case one here. So uh, in the flat case, of course, you just don't have just the Poincaré superalgebra, but in, the, in this, only in this subcase here, any, uh, any H is allowed. But when the deformation is turned on, uh, H is, uh, is uniquely uh, determined. And one, one more question. Do you use any kind of normal forms for F in uh, wedge form? Well, we, we prove that is the we prove that is decomposable, and then it's very easy mm -hmm. uh, because it's uh, uh, well. We have these four cases. In the first case is the zero orbit, uh, and it gives us Minkowski space time, and uh, and then you look um, at the four plane essentially that it. That, that the full form defines. And, uh, and it can be uh, Lorentzian, Euclidean, or, or null. And you have the other three cases. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, <clears throat> 
if it is um, Lorentzian, uh, then you'll, uh, you will arrive at this uh, maximally supersymmetric solution here, discovered originally by uh, Fronde and Rubin in the 80s, is ADS4 cross S7. Uh, the four form is a, a constant multiple of the volume form on the uh, ADS4 factor. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and to satisfy the uh, Einstein and Maxwell equation, uh, you actually need that the scalar curvature of the two uh, factors are uh, related in a, a very specific way. They are proportional in, uh, in this way. So the scalar curvature of the sphere is minus uh, seven uh, over eight, the scalar curvature of the ADS4 factor. So what we uh, really classified is uh, uh, the uh, filter deformation associated to this solution. So we uh, we arrive to orthosymplectic 8.4. So uh, the even part is SO8, uh, the isometry of the sphere, uh, and SP4, uh, which is the isometry of uh, ADS, ADS4, is uh, SO32. Um, okay, if, um, if F is uh, um, Euclidean, so the four plane it defines is Euclidean, then you arrive at another front Rubin type solution uh, discovered uh, some years later uh, uh, by Pilk, Van Nienhuizen, and Tausend. And it's the mirror of what we have before. So it's S4 crossed uh, ADS7. Uh, you still have a, a similar uh, relation between the scalar curvature of the uh, two factors and the four form is proportional to the uh, volume of the uh, S4. In this case, the Killian superalgebra is orthosymplectic 6 to 4. So you have a, a SO6-2 for the zone in the even part for the isometry of uh, ADS7. Uh, and, and, and there is an abuse of notation in, there, there's really an abuse, abuse of notation in, uh, in this real form here because um, um, it's not really orthosymplectic 6-2. It's uh, uh, what, I'm not sure I, 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 need to, I need to say this, but, but okay. The even part is, uh, has to be taught as um, SO6-2, which is actually isomorphic to SO star 8. And, and the other guys is not SP4R, but is SO5, um, which is the isometry of S4. And how, how it acts on the odd part? Well, you take uh, uh, the quaternionic four-dimensional representation of SO star eight, the quaternionic two-dimensional rep of uh, uh, SO5, you tensor over C and you, and you take the real part. Uh, but it's customary to, to call this uh, uh, real form of orthosymplectic 8.4 in, in this way, because it's uh, suggestive uh, uh, for the signature of, uh, uh, of the SO, but it's really an abuse of notation. Uh, and the last case is when F is light-like, and uh, in this case, you will get uh, um, one of the um, symmetric spaces uh, of solvable group, uh, classified by Kain and Wallach is a PP wave. And this solution was discovered by Kowalski and Glickman in the 84. So that's the classification of the maximum it's one person, it's Kowalski Glickman. Uh, you're right. Sorry. I, <laughs> you're completely right. It's Kowalski Glickman. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So let me uh, tell you what's uh, going on in uh, the other dimensions. So we did. Uh, dimension four and six. Um, and recently, uh, Jose with uh, one of each, uh, one of his students has done dimension five as well. So dimension four uh, is something that I've done also with uh, Paul de Medeiros from Stavanger. Uh, and again, you get that uh, the curvature is not the fundamental object of the game. So H42 is uh, uh, zero. And uh, uh, H22 is isomorphic to uh, lambda zero, lambda four, and lambda one. So in this case, we recover uh, precisely what uh, uh, are known as the auxiliary fields in the equal four supergravity. So a function A, uh, a volume form B, and a one form uh, uh, phi. And the uh, normalized beta, comp uh, the beta component of the normalized Spencer cycle 
indicate the, skill, the killing spin or equation for uh, uh, our Lorentz four dimensional spin manifold, uh, which is uh, given by this equation here. Uh, you start to classify the uh, maximum supersymmetric uh, filter deformation and they split into three families, the flat case, uh, again, with the proviso that in this case, you actually can uh, uh, take uh, H uh, anything. Um, uh, the second case is when uh, uh, phi is zero, but A and B are turned on, uh, at least uh, one of uh, one of the two is turned on. Uh, and in this case, you'll get uh, a solution that is locally isometric to ADS4. And the last case, uh, A and B are zero, but uh, phi uh, is turned on. And, uh, and uh, you get uh, uh, the geometry of a group with beam variant metric that uh, differs uh, uh, by the causal type of, uh, of phi. So if phi is space like, then you you get ADS3 cross R. If it is time like, you get uh, RS3. And uh, again, if it is light like, uh, you get something that has a name, but is not so uh, well known. In this case, uh, is the so called Nappy Witten group. So this exactly uh, fits the story in uh, uh, the classical story of uh, four dimensional supergravity, uh, but in dimension six, uh, already new things appear, and actually also in dimension five in this uh, recent result by uh, Jose and his student. So in this case, in dimension six, uh, H22 is uh, three forms and one forms, which are uh, SP1 value. And uh, the killing spinner equation that you get are uh, given by uh, this formula here. So you'll get the Levy Civita, you contract the tree form with uh, with the vector, so you'll get the two formatting uh, via Clifford multiplication on epsilon. Uh, if you focus on this term here, this can be interpreted as a as the, as the spin connection associated to a metric connection with torsion. Uh, and then you have this extra contribution coming from uh, uh, phi, which is a one, uh, which is an SP1 value, the uh, one form. Uh, SP1 here is because the Clifford module, the relevant Clifford module is uh, two dimensional quaternionic. Okay, and the uh, maximum supersymmetric filter deformation is uh, Minkowski space time, again, flat case, H and phi are turned to zero. And then, uh, um, either H or phi is turned on. If phi is turned on, doesn't really matter which uh, element in SP1 you, uh, you get. They are all uh, equivalent uh, for adjoint uh, orbits. Um, and you'll get ADS5, uh, sorry, what did I uh, Yeah, sure, okay. Doesn't matter uh, the element in SP1 that you have, but you still have the uh, causal type of phi. So you'll get ADS5 cross R, uh, RS5, and uh, in the null case, a conformally flat uh, uh, Lorentzian symmetric space again. And finally, phi is zero, but H is turned on. Uh, then H is the Cartanti form of a six-dimensional group with beam variant Lorentzian metric. So if you look at this uh, um, class of solution, those that uh, corresponds to uh, supergravity in uh, so-called n equal one zero uh, supergravity in dimension six are only given by uh, the case where uh, you don't have phi at all and H is taken to be self-dual. So these are the maximally supersymmetric backgrounds of the equal six supergravity, which uh, we recover as a special subclass of uh, uh, case three. Uh, but all the other ones, well, except the flat case, so uh, case three with uh, H uh, non-self-dual uh, or anti-self-dual, and case two are, uh, are new. And, um, and there is interest uh, uh, in uh, going in uh, this direction because physicists are constructing theories which are uh, supersymmetric, but um, uh, without gravity, essentially, uh, and uh, and in this context, again, an important uh, uh, ingredient in, is given by Killing Spinner equation. 
So this list essentially uh, tells you what are uh, the candidates for these so-called rigid uh, supersymmetric field theories. Um, okay, I'll uh, uh, finish with uh, leaving some exercises which uh, I actually used uh, already last time. Um, so it, it involves the, uh, uh, the tensor AC that you, that you define out of, uh, um, out of, uh, of a vector field. So uh, last time we used that C is killing if and only if AX is uh, uh, an endomorphism of SO, TM. And today uh, uh, we use the killing identity, which is uh, automatically satisfied by killing vector fields. So if you have never proved these identities, uh, it's a nice exercise. And the other one are uh, on the uh, Cosman spinorally derivative, which uh, last time um, I take for granted, uh, but they also involve the uh, tensor AC. And uh, if you want to play a bit, these are also uh, simple and uh, nice things uh, to show. Okay, uh, I'll stop uh, here for today. Thank you very much. Questions? Can we ask a question? Sure. Um, so, uh, concerning the uh, the homogeneity theorem, uh, so if yep. I remember correctly, so the, it's it's very sensitive to the uh, the signature being Lorentzian. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, uh, so what about variations? I guess of this homo homogeneity theorem in, for example, other signatures is that known, or or in other dimensions? Uh, so, I mean, you looked at uh, dimension four, dimension six. Are there homogeneity theorems like threshold? Uh, minimum amount of uh, uh, force homogeneity that's that's known in those cases. So this has be considered uh, in generality by uh, Dimitri and uh, and Vicente Cortez. In, uh, oh, okay, okay. In a, in a so do you, do you have uh, do you have similar type of results, or is it restricted, for instance, also to uh, you uh, have or? similar you have similar type of results, but in certain signature. Uh, the critical coefficient is not one half. You need more than one. Uh, yeah, that's not the threshold. Uh, so, in, for, uh, for instance, for these for these uh, these theories that you mentioned, uh, was the threshold supersymmetry uh, known in those cases, or is it? Uh, that 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 implies homogeneity. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 In these cases, is one half. Yeah. It's one half. Okay. Okay, still one half. Uh, I think in Lorentz and well, I mean the proof that I've given uh, really works in any dimension, right? So in Lorentz yeah, and signature yeah. is is yeah. is 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 one half. Yeah. But in other okay. signature, in uh, more close to split one, uh, then you need more than one half. More than one half. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. The, the coefficient is not one is not one half is it's bigger yeah yeah sure. uh the second question really just a question about oh, sure. so, sorry. Mm -hmm. i mean the, the threshold you mean where proof works or where's actually some examples where where does it hold uh mm, proof works but i think it's not difficult to construct counter examples Um, yeah. I had a second question. Yeah, I, I, th I think uh, I think uh, Dimitri and uh, Vicente results are are sharp. Yeah. Okay, so I, I had a second question about the uh, this yeah. four form fundamental curvature. Um, is that yeah. so? Uh, is that easy to compute? I guess for for a given uh, background geometry, like do you know? So I guess wh where is that arising? Is is it arising within a component of torsion? Of the geometry, or is it, uh, um, yeah, like for, for a given background, I guess, do you do you know how to compute it, I guess, geometrically? Uh, to compute the Riemann curvature? You mean no, this fundamental four form? No. Uh, the, uh, so, Ooh, so you, well, like, st starting from what? <laughs> I mean, if you say background, uh, the four form is part of your data, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't understand uh, your question, Dennis. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, um, no, okay. If you're asking me 
no, in okay. which component of the Lie bracket I can uh, uh, I can extract the full form. Maybe then it's best. out of the uh, then it's out of that beta component. If s prime is equal to s, then it's uh, evident because the um, let me let me share. Uh, the beta component is a is a pairing between v and s going to s. E, yeah, 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 yeah. So if uh, if if s prime is equal to all of s, then beta is this guy. So um, it's an endomorphism uh, of your spinor bundle of this form, uh, mm -hmm. and you can you can look at the endomorphism uh, abstractly, and and you can recover what the full form is in a unique way. Okay. Uh, if uh, S prime is not S, uh, then this bit is more complicated. Um, you'll still have a piece looking like this, but with extra co contribution coming from uh, the spinorial action of what I called X today, the map from uh, uh, V to S of V. Okay. So um, you have your X from V to S of V. You think of uh, SOV acting uh, spinorially, so the, this also becomes a map from V to endomorphism of S. And, uh, and uh, the component in your general filter deformation will be the sum of such thing and this beta here. Uh, and uh, we have a proof uh, that still, even if uh, S prime is not all of S, but it's uh, bigger than uh, dimension bigger than 16, uh, then these components uniquely determine phi, the full form. Uh, but it's rather indirect, and and actually we got it uh, uh, as a we got it at the end of our paper, whereas we we would have liked to have it uh, from the very beginning, from purely representation theoretic uh, uh, arguments, uh, mm. but we didn't get it. Uh, so it is true, you can recover uh, the full form out of that component, at least in the highly supersymmetric case, okay? If you, if you go down, uh, then that, there's no hope, right? Imagine you have just one killing spinner. Well, uh, then, uh, then S prime as dimension one and, uh, and the killing superalgebra uh, carry uh, very little information. But in the uh, highly supersymmetric case, uh, the result is that yes, that component of the Libraket carries enough information to recover the full form. Um, but the proof is a bit, uh, uh, it, it's not as uh, direct as, uh, as we would like. Yeah. Any questions? Andre? Okay, if not, uh, just thank you again. Take a lecture.